evening, everyone, from Fighting for My Life. It's been a blessed, full, encouraging, challenging, overcoming, uh, contemplative. It's been a day filled of many things. I want to encourage you not to ever apologize for how you feel. As I said the other day, we may apologize if we feel our behavior was off or our choices, but don't actually apologize for who you are and your heart. Now, we may all be on the path for Yeshua, those of us who believe, but we have a different path a different path in our life of what we do in this life. And the things that we go through are preparing us for those and for where and whom he is preparing us for. And let's remember that everything that comes into our life, God has allowed into our lives. And I so want to beseech you today, friend, not to betray yourself or your heart. Um, don't be a pushover. Really set your face like flint before the Lord. And purpose and intention, all of these things, motive, all of these things are really important. A purposeful life to know the direction that you're moving towards and to live a life full of conviction. I spoke about that last night. The scriptures exhort us to live a zestful life, to always have a flame burning for our Yeshua, not to be indifferent, not to be sitting on a fence, as my dad would say, milk toast, like, and, and the Asians say, mama fufu, like just so-so, like milk toast. Um so important that we don't betray ourselves and that we allow each and every situation to affirm us, affirm who we are, affirm our convictions, affirm our purpose, affirm our relationships, affirm whatever it is that we're doing. And um, yeah, wow. I was just thinking many, many, many years ago, uh, I was looking for an apartment with someone and they made a comment to me, and this was, this is decades ago, and said, you're a pushover. And I, I don't even think I ever heard that word before, but you know something, I never forgot that and I always think about it and I don't think I'm a pushover at all. Uh, about the subject, maybe because all the apartments I was being shown, I loved, you know. But it's really important to not be a pushover and to really have strong convictions and to love and honor yourself. Because I believe when we love and honor ourselves, we are we are loving and honoring God. I once heard it said that, uh, yeah, when we love ourselves, we're honoring God. When we honor God, we're honoring ourselves because we're his creation. And if he is living in the center of our heart, then we can know that our motives is right, our purpose is right to live for him and to follow that particular path that he has for our lives. And, and we do things differently. People are different. But don't be swayed. Be true to who God has made you to be. Be true. Do not betray. Do not. This world can be, there can be so much peer pressure at any age. Don't be a pushover. Don't be persuaded. Don't, don't let the crowd woo you. Don't let the louder voices call to you. In fact, the scripture says that sometimes the Spirit of God is that still small voice. I spoke the other day about a check. When we get a small check, almost like I was using this example of someone came to my door. I was many years ago, I had an opportunity to rent out a couple of rooms where I was, and sometimes I, I was successful in doing that. And a woman showed up at my door, and it was like tilt, tilt. There was a very, very slight check, question mark. But I paid attention, and I know that that was the Lord, because those small checks become bigger checks. So 
they don't disappear because we want them to you know things are real whether we accept them or not a reality is a reality so anyway i just wanted to uh give an encouraging word tonight and remember that whatever comes into your life don't fight it off so fast don't try to beat it off you know like streams in the desert and these heavy devotionals really encourage us to let's let's let god get all the glory of, out of a situation not let's not run from it but let's really seek him in it and let's let God do what he wants to do and um, be true and to be faithful to one of a kind you there's no other you friend you are truly one of a kind so don't abandon your one of a kind heart hallelujah there is something else Ah, it's not coming to me right now, but it will. And um, just be encouraged. Put one foot in front of the other. Breathe in and out. Some of you have heard that before. Let's, let's keep our thoughts where our feet are. Where are my feet? Oh, they're underneath me right here, right now. Let's, let's keep life right here, right now. Let's keep the thoughts right here, right now. Right? Yeshua said, don't worry about tomorrow today has enough cares of its own absolutely so god bless you from the city of the great king you're not alone i've been speaking about that and let's not blame the devil and say the devil made me do it because when we do that we're blame shifting yes spiritual warfare is very real but you know what the devil can't get a hook in us unless there's an open door so it's our responsibility to get that healing where that open door is. Even if it's a crack, it's an open door. And see, God uses the devil, his devil really, because he uses him any way he wants, because everyone's got to bow, bow to the living God. And if we don't, we go, we were, you know, Lucifer was dropped from heaven, right? The most gorgeous angels, what I learned. And he wanted to be God. And God said, I will share my glory with no other. So um, let's remember that he's the only one that we should exalt and revere. We can respect man, and we, and we ought to. But we revere God. And let's not be so quick to run out of uncomfortable situations. God, what do you want to do in me? And God is so faithful that, he, I was saying, he'll use the enemy to show us our sins to show us those cracks in the door where the enemy gets that hook and god doesn't want the enemy to have a hook in our lives the enemy can only get in if there is an open passageway so let's clean up our act in yeshua so that the enemy doesn't get an open passageway yes i can say wow I mean, I can, use a, I can use a few situations, even this morning, early this morning. Um, I let someone really, really get to me, a neighbor in my building um, that I don't have a relationship with, and her and her husband have, have been so severely inconsiderate. And I've tried to like them. I've tried to, you know, have a good rapport, but I continually get astounded by their their severe lack of consideration and so i needed all my energy about me today and i ended up getting woken up uh, by the obnoxious outside buzzer and couldn't go back to sleep and then she started calling me to my private phone uh, opposed to like the group chat of the building asking me if i was awake because am i am i awake can i wake her up and and this is a habit this is it's just a lack of consideration it's people don't bring their keys they don't think about what time they're buzzing whether it's early whether it's late and so it really bothered me and the thing is i can go oh the devil he's a liar oh the devil this the devil that yes it's true it is true the devil absolutely wants to get a hook in me absolutely really wants to get to me but if i can use that as an opportunity and go okay why is this bothering me so much? That's an opportunity for me to look at my stuff and look at my unresolved issue. Or it could just be really spiritual warfare. But I think 
Most times it's a mixture of absolutely the devil does want to steal our joy. This is a fact. But also there's opportunity to learn self-control, to learn how to guard our hearts. It can simply be that God is trying to refine our spiritual tools and he wants us to guard our hearts so we don't allow the enemy to get a hook. So there's always something to be learned. We can be refined and God truly wants to refine us. So let's let God dig for the gold in us. In the name of Yeshua, God bless you. From the city of the great King, Lila Tov, good night.